the official sources all tell you not to cut the pills, whether it's Felimazole, Methamazole, Vidalta, or Carbamazole, any of the others. Tapazole is known by many names. And if you're using Vidalta, by the way, stick around to the end of this video for a special note. The problem with the official sources is that the pills don't come in all of the sizes that cats need. And if you're going to get the dose right using pills, you will almost always end up cutting the pills. Now that's not really a problem because the official sources are not based on reality or science. Uh, as best I can figure, they are just making sure to avoid lawsuits just in case somebody has a problem somewhere down the line and wants to try blaming it on cutting the pills. It wouldn't be from cutting the pills unless they were rather stupid about it and went way out of their way to cause problems. And the arguments against cutting the pills are so absurd that in one of the stories circulating on the internet, and this has even been posted on some formal veterinary sites, the one and only example they give of somebody having trouble from handling the methamazole is someone who was putting the transdermal version directly on their finger uh, without wearing gloves. For those of you who are new to this game, the transdermal version is methamazole in a cream or gel specifically designed to pass through the skin. So first of all, it's not a pill. It has absolutely nothing to do with cutting pills. It is a medication in a form designed to pass through the skin. And putting it directly on unprotected skin is, uh, let's say, uh, not the best side of being human. We all make mistakes and that's a big one. And they claim that this proves that the methamazole or felamazole, whatever form, can pass through the skin. But if that were true, it wouldn't have to be put into a gel specifically to pass through the skin. And it's a big deal to try to find uh, the best gel or cream that does travel through the skin easily, well, and completely, and carries the medication with it. So, the arguments against cutting pills don't even qualify as arguments. They're just official nonsense. Now, with most forms of methamazole, uh, since they're not supposed to be cut, they're not scored. So you end up using a pill cutter, something like this. I'll get back to that. But quick demonstration with one that is scored to be easily cut, even without a pill cutter. You just snap it. Now, you see how much of the medication I have on my fingers after that? <laughs> if you see, it, it's not there. You simply don't really accumulate any significant amount of the medication from handling the pills. It doesn't break into powder that easily, and if it does, most of the powder just falls away. And if you're using a pill cutter, you slip the pill into the spot, close the lid to cut it, and then toss the pills out into your hand, into a cup, whatever you feel like. Now, yes, there is some residual dust in the pill cutter. That is about two years worth of residual dust because I haven't cleaned the pill cutter. That gives you an idea of how little dust is involved with cutting or breaking the pills. And 
if you do get some of the dust on your fingers, it doesn't absorb quickly. You could leave it there for hours and it probably wouldn't absorb much. Now you shouldn't leave it there for hours because there's no point in doing so. So cut your pills, wash your hands. It's that simple. Yes, when you, uh, if you're pilling directly, as we may say, sticking the pill into the cat's mouth and possibly shoving it down a bit with your finger, yeah, that can get a little messy, but you still don't get any significant amount on your hands. And with a little luck, you know, you're using some form of treat or a pill shooter or, you know, pill pocket, something. So, cut the pills to get the dose. And don't let official sources convince you to do things that don't make sense. Check. Check what I say. I'm not official. <laughs> but don't let the nature of the source control you. Do your own thinking. Now, in addition to cutting pills, some people crush the pills and put it in food, liquid, something like that. With most of the medications, that's also fine. The potential problem with putting a piece of a pill or crushed pill into food is that the cat may actually not eat it. If you do crush it and put it into food, put it into a very small amount of food so that you can tell if it's all been eaten and then follow with more food or treats, something. With Felimazole, it has a coating. The coating is there to hide the taste and hide the smell. Methamazole is very bitter. Cutting the pill will reveal the taste and smell, but it does not have any medicinal effect on the pill. The medication will have the same effect without the coating as it does with the coating. Now we get to the Vidalta issue. And also let me say I'll be doing a video specifically about uh, some of the aspects of Vidalta, which is a slightly different medication. Uh, with Vidalta, cutting, Vidalta is a 24-hour formulation. Cutting the pill does not affect that aspect. However, crushing it does. If you crush Vidalta, it is no longer a 24-hour pill. That information comes directly from the manufacturer on an unofficial basis. Uh, going back several years, if you called the makers of these medications, they would unofficially tell you, you know, that it was okay to cut them, even if their packaging said not to. Uh, these days, I'm pretty sure if they talk to you at all, they will just give the standard don't cut. But it's the health of the cat that we're most concerned with. So if there really were a danger to your health, it's not worth a large risk to your health for their health when you can probably find a better way. But there is no significant danger to your health in cutting or crushing the pills. Now don't roll your finger in the dust and stick it in your mouth. I mean, little common sense can go an awfully long way. So do what you need to do. Don't take my word for it. Research. Think about it. And do what works. I hope you enjoy the videos and I'll be making a lot more of them. So, ah, before I forget, I do suggest joining the Hyperthyroid Cats group on Facebook. And I'll see you later. Now I have to take care of whoever it is that's standing on the keyboard making noise. So long.